Vendredi dernier, j'ai lancé la nouvelle politique d'aide internationale féministe du Canada. Une politique qui place l'égalité entre les genres et le renforcement du pouvoir des femmes et des filles au cœur de toutes nos actions. Indeed, we know that women and girls are the most powerful agents of change in their communities and key in the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. And organizations like Women Deliver understand this as well. C'est donc un plaisir de vous présenter notre plus grand ambassadeur de l'égalité entre les genres, un homme qui s'est entouré d'un premier cabinet paritaire dans l'histoire de notre pays, un féministe. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Prime Minister of Canada, the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau. Merci, Marie-Claude. Thank you not only for your kind introduction, but also for the hard work you do every day as our Minister for International Development and La Francophonie. Uh, we're also joined by our extraordinary Minister for the Status of Women, Mariam Monsef, who makes sure that every day all of us push for a better world. I want to thank Katya Iverson, President and CEO of Women Deliver, for being here today, uh, and of course, uh, I need to thank uh, my wife and my inspiration, uh, uh, Sophie Grégoire Trudeau, for being here with us to, as well. Uh, Katya, you might be wondering why we chose this place to make today's announcement. The truth is, I can't think of a better place to share today's news than right here at a monument that celebrates Canada's famous five. These five... <laughs> These five women, like many generations of strong women who followed them, were unwavering advocates for Canada's women and girls. They believed that women could and should be equal participants in public service and that women were no less qualified to serve than men and in many cases more qualified. And they were right. Aujourd'hui, les femmes occupent la moitié des postes de notre cabinet. Elles font partie du groupe de personnes chargées d'établir les priorités de notre gouvernement et de prendre les décisions. Et la leader de notre gouvernement à la Chambre des communes est une femme, la première dans l'histoire du Canada à occuper ce poste. Dans les assemblées locales et dans les législatures provinciales ou territoriales, à la Chambre des communes et au Sénat, des femmes suivent les traces des célèbres cinq qui ont travaillé sans relâche pour bâtir un monde où chaque personne a vraiment une chance réelle et égale de réussir. Et en tant que gouvernement, nous travaillons fort pour que, Canadiens, pour que les Canadiennes aient le soutien dont elles ont besoin pour réussir. Que ce soit avec l'allocation canadienne pour enfants, qui accorde en moyenne 9 000 par an non imposable à presque 90 des familles ayant à leur tête des mères monoparentales que ce soit avec nos investissements pour créer des places en garderie de bonne qualité et abordables, ou avec les efforts que nous déployons pour empêcher et contrer la violence fondée sur le sexe, we're following through on our promises and we're showing an entire generation of Canadian girls and boys what it really means to be a feminist. But I don't want to leave anyone with the impression that our work is anywhere near done. Here and around the world, we need to take a stronger stand in defense of human rights, especially those of women and girls. The right to access the same opportunities available to men and boys, including the right to a good education and to good, well-paying jobs. The right to decent health care and the freedom to make their own choices when it comes to their sexual and reproductive health and rights. The right to be full and equal participants in their households, in their communities, and in their economies. These are the things that Katya and Women Deliver advocate for every single day. And they're not alone. La semaine dernière, la ministre Bibot a présenté la politique d'aide internationale féministe du Canada. 
Cette politique réaffirme l'engagement du Canada à l'égard de la réduction de la pauvreté et des inégalités. Elle met l'égalité des sexes et l'autonomisation des femmes et des filles au cœur de nos efforts. L'allocation de 650 millions de dollars pour combler des lacunes persistantes en matière de santé et de droits sexuels et reproductifs pour les femmes et les filles constitue un des éléments clés de cette politique. Nous avons adopté cette approche parce que nous sommes convaincus que le meilleur moyen de bâtir un monde plus solide, plus sûr et plus prospère est d'appuyer les femmes et les filles. Pour reprendre les mots de l'organisme Women Deliver, quand le monde investit dans les femmes, tout le monde y gagne. Aujourd'hui, je suis heureux d'annoncer que le Canada sera l'hôte de la prochaine conférence Women Deliver à Vancouver en juin 2019. Today, I am excited to share the news that Canada will be home to the next Women Deliver Conference to take place in Vancouver in June of 2019. As I know well, Vancouver is one of Canada's most exciting, most diverse, and most forward-looking cities, making it the ideal place for a global gathering like the Women Deliver Conference. The conference brings together more than 6,000 leaders, influencers, advocates, and activists from more than 160 countries, with another 100,000 people joining in online. It's a chance for people to meet and mobilize, to listen, and to learn, especially from those whose perspectives are not always given the attention they deserve, indigenous peoples, young people, and survivors of violence and conflict. The Women Deliver Conference doesn't just inspire and motivate the people who attend, it reminds all of us of our responsibility to take care of each other and the need to continue to work together so that women and girls around the world are given every opportunity to succeed. In addition to hosting the 2019 conference, Canada will be providing $20 million over three years starting this year to support Women Deliver and its global advocacy work. This support will help Women Deliver continue its efforts to improve the health, rights and well-being of women and girls with a focus on sexual and reproductive health and rights, including in fragile and humanitarian settings. Emily Murphy, la première des célèbres cinq, disait ceci. Chaque fois que je ne sais pas si je dois ou non me battre, je me bats. En travaillant sans cesse à la protection et la promotion de la santé, des droits et du bien-être des femmes et des filles, l'organisation Women Deliver continue cette bataille. Je suis fier que Vancouver accueille cet important événement d'envergure mondiale et j'espère qu'avec moi, vous ferez tout ce qui est possible pour que la conférence Women Deliver 2019 soit la meilleure de toutes. J'aimerais maintenant vous présenter quelqu'un qui, par son activisme auprès des femmes et des filles, rend notre monde meilleur pour notre fille et pour nos fils, une femme qui fait de moi de jour en jour un meilleur féministe. In March of 2016, Women Deliver announced her as one of their five international high-level influencers. But if you speak with anyone in my family, you already know she was already a high-level influencer. <laughs> Je vous invite à accueillir mon épouse, qui est aussi ma meilleure amie, mon inspiration, Sophie Grégoire Trudeau. Merci. Hello, everyone. Bonjour à tous et à toutes. En parlant de notre fille, I just want to tell you, my love, that uh, the talent show this morning, Ella Grace's talent show at school, went really well. Uh, but the most striking moment was when the singing choir was on stage with all the boys and the girls together. And hearing the boys and girls' voices unite and sing with harmony was a great metaphor for finding myself here today and every day on the path for more justice and equality. Et à chaque moment que je vois ma fille ou, mon, ou mes fils, mon mari, mettre des actions de l'avant, non seulement des paroles, mais des actions de l'avant qui mettent de l'avant l'importance 
de traiter les femmes et les hommes de la même manière. Je me rappelle de l'importance de la grande aventure sur laquelle on se retrouve. Et on voit tranquillement les festivités qui commencent à prendre forme pour le 150e. We'll be celebrating very soon our great achievements as a country. And we're seeing the stage being put up, and starting, the, starting to prepare this whole hill for the, for the big celebration. But this reminds us of what it is to celebrate as a country. Looking to the past, learning from the lessons that we need to learn from, but also looking towards the future. And is it, it is a time for any kind of celebration, for self-reflection. What have we learned? How are we going forward as human beings, as a country, as a nation, and as a society? And going forward means progress. Canada is making some very important decisions with some highly intelligent and open-hearted and open-minded people who are making decisions based on facts and education and knowledge for the better good and the common good. And to look towards the future means that we need to progress. We need to heighten the level of awareness, knowledge and education of everyone. And it is said that the hardest thing to change in a society is what is considered normal. Well, we well know today that it is not normal for half of the world's population to be denied their most basic rights, to be violenced in their daily lives, to be taken away from school. It is not normal. Therefore, the change that we're looking forward to and the progress that we can create is not only feasible, it is possible, and better is always possible. Over 6,000 people will unite on the fifth Women Deliver conference in Vancouver. And not only will this help to ignite change and, and heighten the level of awareness in our internet with our international partners, but let this message of equality and justice and peace and unity resonate in our own families with our own brothers and sisters and uncles and mothers and fathers and friends and boyfriends. May that message resonate in our daily lives because we are the carriers of that change every day. And this is the only way forward is if every citizen feels involved and knows that when women fully participate in a society, society as a whole is healthier, economically, psycholo psychologically, spiritually, on so many levels. Now, this quest for what is right is embodied by a woman whose level of conviction, influence, and passion is not only contagious, but it's been, she's been on a quite a journey and she's been attracting people from around the world to join her on this quest for what is right. And it is my true honor to present to you today the President and CEO of Women Deliver, Katja Iverson. I would like to start by acknowledging that the land on which we gather here is the traditional unceded Algonquin territory. Thank you for welcoming Women Deliver to Ottawa, to Parliament Hill, and not least to this amazing place, a monument that celebrates the five famous five, and they have names, Nellie, Henrietta, Irina, Louise, and Emily. They truly were women who delivered Women who paved the way for generations of activists, for progress, who showed that big change is possible, and who used humor, hope, and human rights to get the work done. Their work lives on. As we say a little polemically in Women Deliver, women deliver, and much more than babies. There's good men who deliver for women as well, don't worry. <laughs> uh, Canada is one of the countries in the world that really delivers for women, at home and abroad. And we are, in Women Deliver, beyond thrilled to host or to have the fifth Women Deliver conference in Canada, a country that has an international assistance policy with women's rights, gender equality, and sexual and reproductive health and rights at its core, and a government and a prime minister that calls itself and himself a feminist. So no, it's not a coincidence that Women Deliver has chosen to have its next conference in Canada. 
you live it, you do it, and you export it. And you 